Hey friends, in this video I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make a tessellation pattern in Inkscape. Let's get started. A tessellation is defined as a pattern of a repeating shape that has no gaps or overlaps. The shape that we start with is very important because it has to be able to tessellate all on its own. So, a square can tessellate. With a circle we have gaps, so that cannot tessellate. A rectangle can tessellate, and a hexagon can also tessellate. There are just a few other geometric shapes that will also work as well. Here's a summary of the process I'll be demonstrating today. I'll start with a plain old rectangle that's just minding its own business. Then, I'll transform that into a shape which will still be able to tessellate. Once I decide what I want it to be, I'll add some embellishments with some lines. Finally, I can fit everything together into the tessellation pattern. There are three transformation methods we can use. Translation, rotation, and reflection. In this video, I'll focus on the translation method. Okay, let's dive in. I'm starting with a page size of eight and a half inches tall and 11 inches wide, since I want my final pattern to fit on this page. I'll grab the rectangle tool and draw a simple rectangle. I'll set the dimensions to inches and make the width two and a half inches and the height two inches. Now I need to draw some lines for the translation method, so I'll use the pen tool. I'll come down to the bottom and hold the shift key and select blue for the stroke color and the red X so that there's no fill. We can see those settings in the upper right hand corner. There's also a small three there to indicate that the stroke width will be three pixels. Okay, for my first line, I want to draw it from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. So I'll turn snapping on to help me with that. I want this to be a fish. So I'll draw the basic shape of the fish's head and mouth. Now I'm done with snapping and I'll go to the node tool to flesh it out a little bit better. Let's make it a happy looking fish. Now comes the translation part. With the line selected, we're going to shift select the rectangle. Then I want to use the line to separate the rectangle into two pieces. So I'll come up to path and use division. And if you see the note there when I hover over that, it says cut the bottom path into pieces. If I select the right piece now, you can see I can hold down the control key and pull it out straight to the right. Now to do the translation, I'll turn snapping on and holding down the control key, drag it to the left and snap it to the left edge. Now I wanna do the same sort of thing with the bottom edge. I'll draw a shape that looks like some fins. So now I'll select the line and the main rectangle again and use path division to separate the two parts. Here's what the bottom part looks like and since snapping is still on, I can just drag it with the control key straight up to the top and snap it into place. Okay, and now what I can do is simply select all three pieces and use path union to make it into one shape. Now, if I didn't know what I already wanted it to be, I could rotate it around to see if I see something. Actually, when it's in this position, I kind of see a rooster wearing a top hat. Anyway, I'll use control Z to undo the rotation and I think I'll flip it horizontally so the fish is swimming from the left to the right. Okay, I'll start embellishing this so everyone can see what I see out of this shape. I'll go to the fill and stroke menu and add a stroke paint. I need to select the fish first. Let me change the stroke style so it's a little bit thicker and I think four pixels looks good. And I can come down to the bottom and hold the shift key and select black to turn the stroke into black. Next, I'd like to add an eye. So I'll go to the circle and ellipses tool and make a perfect circle holding down control and shift. Now let's say I wanna make it bigger. Let's see what happens when I expand it and let go. The stroke size has been radically increased. Now I don't want that, so let me use control Z and show you what we can do here. We can come over to this option and turn off the stroke scaling. So now, no matter how much we resize things, the stroke will remain the same at four pixels. Okay, that looks good. 
I'll go ahead now and use the pen tool and the node tool to further embellish this fish as much as I like. All my embellishments need to stay inside the shape so that it can still tessellate when we're done. Okay, that looks good. Let's select everything and group it all together. Okay, good. I want to move it off to the side here. Uh, use Control D, make a duplicate, and drag that down a bit. Let's add a little space for what's coming up next. I plan to use two different colors for my fish tessellation pattern. So let me select the first fish and go to the fill and stroke menu and check out the fill color to see what the hex code is. Now I'm going to bring in a nice tool that I found from the folks at Canva, which helps me coordinate colors when I need to do that. With the initial color that you give it, it lets you look at uh, triadic for three colors or tetradic for four colors. And I just want complementary for two colors. So now I'll paste in the color that we have and it'll give me a complementary color and I can just click on that hex code to bring it back into Inkscape. So now I can select the second fish, go over to its fill color setting, and paste in the new color. All right, good deal. So now what I want to do is make some copies of these two fish so I can paste them all together into the pattern. I'm going to use Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. Now in the new menu that opens up on the right, you can see all kinds of tabs with options that for this purpose we don't really need to worry about. So I can just click the reset button here to set them all to their default values. Now I want one row and five columns. So that's what I have set here. Then I can just go ahead and click the create button. There we go. Now I can select the bluefish and do the same thing. Now we have our five clones each, but the original is underneath the first clone. So let me move the first clone over to the right for each row. You can tell it's a clone by looking at the status information at the bottom where it identifies each one as a clone. When I click the original ones, it does not say that they are a clone. These can be very useful later if we decide on some different colors. So if I click the first fish and make it red, look what happens to its clones. And the same thing for the bottom fish if I make it a darker blue. Okay, cool. I'll use Control Z a couple times to undo those and keep the colors I started with. All right, now I'll turn snapping on and arrange these fish into one row of 10 fish with alternating colors, of course. Sometimes it helps to zoom in to make sure they snap together perfectly. That looks good, so let's group it all together. Now I think these 10 fish would look good as eight rows to make it about the right size to fit on our document size. So I'll go ahead and use Control D and snap the rows together. Okay, that looks good. Let me group all of that together as well. Okay, here we are at our document and I'm going to make a clipping shape to trim the size of our fish pattern. I've got snapping turned on, so I'll just make a rectangle. I'll turn it into yellow and remove the stroke. I wanna go over to the fill and stroke menu and change the fill's opacity to about 50% so that I can see what's underneath the yellow rectangle. Now I'll select the fish pattern and go over to the Align and Distribute menu to make sure I can align it to the center of the page. Before I resize the pattern, I do want the stroke to be scaled now, so I'll turn that option back on, and I'm also going to turn snapping off. Now I can hold down Control and Shift and grab a corner to resize it, and it'll still remain centered on the page. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'll deselect and just select the rectangle and then shift select the pattern and go up to object, clip, set clip to trim it away. There we go. Those are all the steps to create a tessellation pattern starting with a simple rectangle. Now I've got some fun examples for you where I had no idea what the shape would turn out to be. This really gives us a chance to let our creativity come through. This time I'm starting with a square and I have my two lines already in place. So I'll go ahead and select the line on the right, shift select the square and use path division to make the two parts. And I'll translate the part from the right to the left edge. This time I have the line at the top 
and I'll use that to separate the square into two more parts and translate the top part down to the bottom edge. And I'll union everything together. Now, without even moving anything, I see kind of a bird type of a shape, so I'm going to flip it and go ahead and work with that. So here are my embellishments. Could be a bird, could be a penguin, not quite sure. And here's the tessellation pattern with a couple of different colors. But now let's go back to the shape. Could this possibly be something else? Let me rotate it a little bit like this. Is there anything you see here? I wonder if you see the same thing that I did. I see a couple of floppy ears up here at the top. Let's see how I embellish this one. There it is, a happy rabbit. And here's the final tessellation pattern for this. Notice that because we rotated the shape a bit, things are not side by side when they fit together. They fit together on a slight angle instead. Okay, now I have two more examples where I'll show you a slight variation on this translation method. Here I'm starting with a square again, but this time my first line is taking up most of the real estate of the square. We'll do our standard path division and translate the piece from the bottom to the top. But now the difference is I'm going to union these two pieces together before I do the next translation. Now the difference is instead of using the right or the left edge to make my line, I'm going to draw the line from the top of the cutout piece to the top of the piece that we translated. That line can be anywhere between those two parts. And I'll go ahead and do the path division, and now the translation is from side to side again. And I'll union those two pieces together now. So I see something now without doing any rotation. You see the same thing? Let's find out. I've got some kind of happy horned animal, maybe a cross between a ram and a reindeer. It also looks domesticated because I added some kind of collar to it. And by using this variation on the translation method, everything still fits together perfectly. Okay, that last example was kind of a tall shape, so I decided to use less real estate for my first line in this example. We'll use the same process to translate the bottom piece to the top and union the two pieces together. And I'll make some kind of meandering line to connect the two parts together again. And we'll divide and translate to the left and union them together again. So what do you see now? Took me a little while, but I did come up with something. Let's take a look at what I have. I have some type of rodeo cowboy on top of a very annoyed animal. <laughs> And once again, everything fits together nicely. Okay, that's it for this video on tessellations using the translation method. I hope you agree that playing around with this method can be fun because once you start, you never know what you're going to end up with. Okay, thanks for watching. That was certainly a fun project. Now, I know you can be intentional when you start to make a tessellation with the end goal in mind, but I think it's much more fun to just doodle and see what you come up with and take that transformed shape and challenge your creativity to try to make something out of it. Also, why don't we take a look at the hexagon? Use the star and polygon tool to make a six-sided hexagon and try the translation method on that. Now you have three sides that you can work with. Thanks again for watching. Hope you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.